All right, Shane, we're on to the round of eight now as the round of 16 has come to a close today. A lot of games went very much the way that we anticipated they'd go, while others were very much as advertised as toss-up games and fell in that way. Um, and that's both across 1A and 2A. And really, the biggest upset I saw came in the 2A south as Tri-Valley went down 50 to 35 to uh, Shelbyville. And Tri-Valley was a favorite in that game by three scores. But <clears throat> apparently they just could not stop the Ram passing offense. Today. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that busted everybody's bracket in our competition. Yes, I, mean, I would say so. so. I mean, a majority of people had them in the semifinals. So when you don't win the second round, it's pretty hard to do that. Right, exactly. I, I don't know, maybe... Maybe somewhere along the line, someone's lost a second round game, somehow made it to the semis. I don't know. I have to do some checking into that. I, I know, right? So, in the 1A North, obviously, we got three teams from the NUIC that are moved on to the quarterfinals, yep. with one team um, still sitting in there from the Lincoln Trail Conference and the Princeville Princes, who yeah. took care of Dakota last week in double overtime. Again, today, winning in overtime against their own conference rival, Anawan Weathersfield. And then down south, the WIVC took a hit today as they lost two of their three remaining teams and only have one left in Carrollton, and they get to play the number one seed in the south in Tuscola. Alabama. Yeah, Alabama of Tuscola, Alabama. Illinois. Yeah. So the Warriors and the Hawks will square off next week in the quarterfinals. And then another one was Red Hill as they were the number two seed. They're still in it. Obviously, they beat Cumberland. Friday night, 36 to nothing. And then another heavy hit favorite down in the south is the number six seed Athens Warriors as well, as they rolled Argento Oriana today, 42 to 12. Yeah, just, I mean, that the south pretty much took care of what we thought would happen this weekend. I mean, Red Hill's not as strong as the record indicates. We'll probably find that out next week, as well as Tuscola beating Carrollton, in my imagination, anyway. Uh, I mean, we've been. Pretty high on Carrollton as far as rankings, and then they kind of slipped as the year went on because their play ultimately slipped. So, yeah, you look at where Carrollton was ranked, and some of that came off of what their reputation is. I right. mean, just a couple of years ago, there at the state championship game in 2014, playing the Forest and Cardinals in a very close, tightly contested ball game. Right. But since that game. Their conference just is not as strong as it has been in the past. Um, and this year, realistically, the 1A South outside of Tuscola and Athens, as we predicted, and even Warrensburg late them while they were still in it. Unfortunately, they had Athens right away in the first round. But those were really the three teams that we had identified as true title contenders in the 1A South at the beginning of the season. Right. I mean, and we were high on Carrollton going into the season. We counted them as probably one of the teams to watch. And I mean, Tuscola stays in 2A. You can pretty much mark Athens and DeKalb. I mean, before you even see what the pairings are as far as what the South was looking like. I mean, the South is bad, but the good teams in the South, the, the top of the South is it's decent. They're, they're, they're very good, really. Right. I mean, you got to give them that respect. Um, some. If you look at the two-way side of the bracket, obviously we had our West Carroll Thunder lose today to GCMS 24 to six. Congratulations, Thunder! You had a great season, by the way. But that now sets up a rematch with El Paso Gridley there, which is a conference crossover game for them. Right. And then on the other side, you have Orion and Newman take off conference match. Another yeah. conference matchup. Yeah. And then down in the south, the anticipated Moreau Forsyth versus West Hancock matchup. And with Shelbyville's um, defeat over Tri Valley today, they're going to take on Westville on the road next week. And Westville comes in with a perfect 11 0 mark out of the Vermilion Valley Conference. And obviously, we're very accustomed to that as we just watched Forrest and beat Salt Fork in round one, who also come from that same conference. Right. So we got a lot of we got a few a games to talk well, about. We have got a lot of big hitters in both one A and two A, and we're gonna break that down right now. Lena Winslow comes in with an eleven zero record, the number one seed and the number one ranked team in the state, and they are going to travel to Aquin and play the Bulldogs, who come in with the number five seed 
with a 9-2 and record after the Bulldogs upset Stockton today in the conference rematch, 21-14. to Lena Winslow took care of Milledgeville, 49-16, to in a crossover conference match as Lena Winslow was up 43 to nothing at the half in their game, and Aquin, in their game with Stockton, actually responded after Stockton tied the game up at 14 with just a little over a minute left in the game. 18 seconds later, on a swing pass to the outside, backup QB Cooper Hart hit Bryce Carlson for an 80-yard touchdown. That ultimately was the difference in the game as they pull out that touchdown victory. Yeah, um, a wild one, that was to say the least. I mean, great game. This is the second week in a row I've been to a game where a team has been held under 20 yards at half. Um, my suggestion would be, if you see me coming to cover your game, politely ask me to leave, especially as we move towards that semifinal matchup that's going to happen. Um, you see me at that game, I understand you not wanting me to be there. I bring bad luck to teams like this. Uh, Hell of a game, though. I mean, second half, Aquin's been known for their second half all year. Um, and realistically, it showed. I mean, I don't. you probably added up the total yards, but 19 yards in the first half, and then to just go off. You know, Stockton realistically should have ran away with that game. But, you know, you're sitting there at halftime. Stockton's got 188 yards to Aquin's 19. You're thinking, okay, 21 nothing. You look up, and it's 6 to nothing. I mean... You can't leave a one-score lead in the half after you've dominated so much. Well, and that's one of those things that we were discussing throughout the entirety of that game was you saw Stockton drive the ball deep into Aquin territory time and time and time again right. throughout the first half. Just watch the Aquin defense come up big on fourth and threes, fourth and twos, fourth and fours, and shut the Stockton, uh, Stockton offense down and get the ball back on a turnover on downs. Right, and I mean, look at the play calling for Stockton, too. I mean, DeBorah ran the ball how many times today? 41 times. I mean, geez, that's a lot of carries. It's a lot of carries and a lot of energy there. Right. But, uh, I mean, yeah, Aquin had the uh, response for right. the Stockton offense in the second half primarily. And, you know, like last week, the game I was covering went to overtime, and you're sitting there with under a minute left, and you're like, all right, two overtime games in a row, and then bang, Aquin quick hits, ball game over. Right, and it makes you wonder how that play went for 80 yards. I mean, you look at oh, some of what how, unfolded. We discussed on there. On, in the vehicle today <laughs> what happened there or what didn't happen, and bad angles, bad play recognition. As to, I mean, you have the sideline and you have the angle when you're the safety. There's really no reason you shouldn't have made that tackle at the fifty, let alone let it go to the house. Right, but it did. It did. Aquin was victorious. Now. They get Lena Winslow, and Lena Winslow played a conference opponent in Milledgeville who comes from the same upstate conference as Aquin and Stockton. They also lost to Stockton by two points earlier in the season, and then in week nine were throttled by Aquin 38 to nothing. Mm -hmm. Last week, Milledgeville beat A-Town 56 to 14 in the first round. But here again, you're playing Lena Winslow in Lena, and it basically broke down to exactly what we thought it would as Lena Winslow jumped out to a 43 to nothing lead at the half. Well, we've been talking about this all year. The, the gap of good teams between the two divisions within the conference is monstrous, to say the least. You take the top teams on each side, and then, I mean, we saw that already this year when Aquin got trounced by Forrest, and I mean, what did we really expect going into that game today? And that's one of the things that we talk about. I mean, specifically, when you look at the Northwest compared to the Upstate, we've seen it all year long. Mm -hmm. And when you really break it down, you look at Stockton was the champion of the Upstate Conference. Perfect, 7-0. They lost to West Carroll, who finished fourth in the Northwest Division, 14 to nothing. We've also talked about it all year, where Lena Winslow and Forreston 
are on a whole different echelon from everybody else. You got Lena Winslow and Forrest in here. And then the rest of it's right here. And then you got your other half down here. Right. It's really three tiers, to be honest. Right. And four, if you want to break it down further with the, the top two, the middle two, and then EPC and the rest. I mean, realistically, that's what we're talking about here. And it's not even close. No, it's not. And that's what is at stake as this game comes to play here right. in the quarterfinals. Now, don't get me wrong. Hats off to Aquin. Back-to-back years, you have made the quarters. Now, at the beginning of the season, this is exactly where we thought they would be. Right. Oh, yeah. Play, except on a different path, per se. Yes. We expected more offensive pyre, offensive firepower out of what they had. Bigger scores than what they put up. Right. And obviously, like you stated, they're a second-half team. They have not played in the first half of any ball game, with exception to the Milledgeville game in Week 9. Well, look, Cummins had one catch today for 12 yards. I mean, if you tell me that Aquin beat Stockton, I'm asking you, did he go over 100 yards on the day? But also, I mean, that relates back to the quarterback-wide receiver wide receiver relationship with Deemer going down, I mean, you lose that connection, too. You do. I mean, as expected, Cooper Hart was obviously a very good replacement right. for, for Jonah in this game. We knew that he would be. I mean, there's you, you, you've you seen flashes of what Cooper Hart can do at the quarterback position in the past, so it was no surprise what we were getting with Jonah Deemer being out of the game. It's just unfortunate that Jonah Deemer was not in this game. Right. But, very capable backup with Cooper throwing the ball. Granted, you know, he does get in there on the receiver side of things when Jonah was in at mm-hmm. quarterback. But, um, I just don't see where Aquin is going to match up with Lena Winslow at all in this game. Right. I agree with that. And before we really dive into this, I just want to say that, I mean, no disrespect to Aquin for what I'm about to say. But you're right. They don't match up. They don't come close to matching up. And and on next Saturday, we will find out. Everybody's going to find out. If you haven't seen already what we're talking about, you're going to see what Lena Winslow is and Mr. Valentine. Um I mean, realistically, we're kind of joking here. I mean, but it's not a joke. Uh, Lena Winslow's played 11 teams. Um, when Forreston holds him to 210 yards, and that's the best defense that Lena Winslow saw all year, um, you got problems if you're at one. Um, Lena Winslow's line play is out of this world. And then you look at Aquin's line and – wonder how they're going to get a tackle within five yards, let alone getting to the point of beating somebody. Um, no disrespect to Barr and his coaching staff because they've done a hell of a job this year. Absolutely. But if I was him, I'd be corralling all 11 coaches that Lena Winslow's lost to and throwing around some ideas on how to stop Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's part of the problem. I mean, how are you going to stop over 4,000 yards of rushing offense in a career? I mean, Ravion's starting to push the 2,000-yard mark on the season. Right. I mean, he was at 1544 coming in today's game, and right now I have not looked up his stats for a day. But being that they won 49-16, to 16, I'm sure it was a large margin. Yeah, you're looking at probably six carries, pushing 200 yards somewhere in there. I mean, the kid is on fire. I mean, we haven't seen this probably since 2011 when Jake Apple went off for Dakota and look, that team ultimately won the state championship. We are talking about the same thing here as to what Lena Winslow is trying to do. And unfortunately, this coming week, it's just going to be Aquin that is going to get dismantled by Lena Winslow and Rafi on Valentine. Well, and that's one of the conversations that we keep having week after week after week. 
I mean, granted, we know that not everybody sees the same caliber of teams that we're watching week in right. and week out, and how much film we're watching of other teams right. throughout the state week in and week out. Nobody, nobody sees that. They right. don't give us that credit, and that's fine. I don't care. Right. Because our job is to tell you yep. what your we do expect them to see. Right. Well, and Lena Winslow, and I know that you're going to agree with me here, but their defensive line is arguably the best front four defensive line in all of Class 1A and Class 2A in the state. Well, and actually, I won't agree because there is no argument to be made. It's, it's fact. That is a fact. And you're right. It is our job to inform people. And, you know, we've encountered some issues where people don't always like our opinion. But, and that's expected when you get parents and fans of only one school that pretty much follow them for nine weeks. And then they don't like our opinion. But we're giving information based on everything we're seeing. And we would be doing a disservice if we didn't provide them with that. Right. I mean, I know that we have a lot of people that do actually applaud us for telling the truth for what it is. We we don't sugarcoat it, and I mean, right. we're not about to not start sugarcoating to. it. We're telling you what we see. And in this game, like you said, hats off to Aquin, Coach Barr, and staff. They've done a hell of a job. They've gotten through adverse moments. But the run ends here in Freeport on Saturday when the Panthers come to town. I agree. And, you know, it's – I mean, I've been guilty of this myself, and I know the hardcore fans have as well who do more than just follow one team. You know, the area fans that are looking at all these games every week and trying to figure out the best one. And I mean, there was no one more excited to me than me or you when the IHSA came out with the bracket and showed Forreston on one end and Lena Winslow on the other one. I mean, <clears throat> book it two weeks ago. That is your semifinal match. We're just moving a little down the line now, and unfortunately for Aquin, it ends here. That's, I mean, you know, you made it at this point. Good season, kind of where we expect you to do. But anytime you get Lena Winslow and Forrest on opposite sides this year, forget about it. It's over. Well, and that's just one of the things. I mean, like you said, or we've stated, there are four teams that are state championship, state championship caliber teams. Right. Nobody else compares to those four teams in this class this year. Liam Winslow is one of those teams. They're a, they're already a pregame favorite by four scores in this game. Yeah, and my guess is I'm, I mean, we've already given this. I'm going to say four, or uh, Lena Winslow running clock. That's my take on this. Yeah, I definitely say that if Lena Winslow gets that five or six touchdown mark, depending on if they're going for two to get five scores at eight points pop or six scores right. at seven points pop, it's definitely going to get to that running clock type of situation and really break it down further. Aquin lost to Forrest in 50 to 19 on the earlier this year. Liam Winslow did beat Forreston earlier this year. And like I was telling you on, on the way here tonight, I don't see Aquin putting up 19 on Liam Winslow either. No, I don't either. So. Because you, I mean, no offense to Cooper Arndt. Like we said, he's very capable at doing the things right. that he does. Exactly. But Jonah Deemer's just at a different level as far as moving around in the pocket than what Cooper does. Right. And we saw that today. But they're just... It's just a whole different level of play. I agree. Um, but if you are an Aquin fan, you wonder where you have to go to try to get a victory out of this. Um, you're going to need a big game out of Luda King and the running game. I mean, passing is ultimately where Aquins ended up. But in order to beat Lena Winslow or come close, you got to have long, sustained drives, and that starts with the running game. The number three seeded Forest and Cardinals are going to play host to the 10 seed Princeville Princes. Forest and comes in this game with a 10 1 record after they beat Fulton earlier today 30 6, while Princeville comes in with a 9 2 record, squeaking out another overtime victory for the second week in a row 21 20 over conference rival Anawan Weathersfield. Um, looking at the Princeville game, Anawan Weathersfield. Beat Princeville earlier in the year, fourteen to six. So obviously Princeville avenged a loss to a conference opponent. 
Forrest, on the other hand, taking on Fulton from the Three Rivers Conference. A lot of people thought that this game would be very close. Realistically, sorry, that's funny. <laughs> realistically, I think you would predict a four score win for Forrest. Yeah. I predicted a three score win by Forrest. Forrest wins by three scores. Right. So we're in the ball game. Well, if I you know. think about it, they left two so scores on the field, exactly. too. I mean, um, they got to the five yard line before they threw an interception. Right. And then they got to the two yard line and took a knee. Right. So you put yeah. those two in the end zone, it's 44 to 6 instead of 30 to 6. And I sometimes wonder if they should have put, I mean, obviously they shouldn't have. Sportsmanship, everything is important. But, I mean, to satisfy some of these critics as to what this game is going to be, I mean, did Forrest indeed those extra points to finally convince people? I mean, the crap we heard all week long about Fulton going to play with Forrest, I mean, that's a damn joke. Yeah. Especially when you look at the numbers as Forrest and held Fulton to minus 27 yards in the first half. And then for the game, Fulton had zero yards rushing. And 120 yards passing for a total of 120 yards. Let that sink in. Um, I mean, I think Forreston dominated that game, right. regardless of how the second half played out. Because remember, Forreston right. was up 30 to nothing. Yes, Fulton won six to nothing in the second half. Okay, but yeah. did they really win six to nothing in the second half when Forreston only had four drives in the well, second? Well, the half? problem for Fulton there is, I mean, you take all four quarters into a final score. You can win all the second halves you want. You could be losing a hundred nothing and put up thirty in the second half, and the other team scores zero. You still lose by seventy. You see how stupid that sounds? Yes. Moral victory for Fulton. I mean, negative twenty-seven yards. You deserve to get blown out, and that's exactly what happened. I don't care. I really don't. <laughs> so. Princeville, yeah, Princeville is coming to Forreston. Who'd have thought that too for the quarterfinals? And right. the Princes in their nine and two record are two overtime wins away from sitting at home. Right, theoretically speaking. Um, yeah, I mean they've beaten two teams. I mean, obviously a healthy and one of shields is a different story. I mean Princeville's beaten two teams who they've had. No business beating one and Dakota who completely dominated them for a majority of the game still beat them in overtime. You know they got a little overtime luck going here. You know hats off to Princeville. I mean they're junior dominated. I think they lose two kids next year. I mean geez, I know this they're is gonna the team we're going to be talking about next year. Yes, they're going to be tough in the Lincoln Trail for sure next right. year. There's no doubt about it. They most likely will be the favorite coming out of the Lincoln Trail. For I, next I mean year. I would assume yeah. So. But kind of on that Aquin path. You've made the quarters. Um, you yeah, know, there's no tracks left. You're kind of at the cliff. The cliff is named Forreston, and you have no tracks to go over it. I mean, realistically. I have to agree with you because, you know, since the week two loss that Forreston had to Lena Winslow, the number one ranked team in the state. Right. Obviously, Forreston comes in with not just the number three seed, but they are the number three ranked team in the state. Ever since that loss, Forreston has been rolling, with the exception of one other game against EPC where they played sloppily in a 30-18 to win in Lanark back in week four. But you look at the games after that, I mean, People don't. People look at the Forest and EPC game, and they sit there and they say, "Well, Forest and didn't do this and this and this." The problem is, is yes, Forest and did not play a good game against EPC. But if you look at what they did against EPC, they were in control the entire game. If you really need that statement game to see what Forest and really is. Look at their Week 8 matchup with West Carroll in a sloppy field down in Savannah where they won 44-6. to Right. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Forrest and beat Dakota 40 to nothing? Yep. Did Dakota not beat West Carroll? Right. Did Dakota not beat EPC? Did West Carroll not beat EPC? People, 
you cannot sit there and say that because Forreston only played EPC to a 30 to 18 win, that they're not good enough to be where you think that they should be or could match up with the teams that you think that they can't match up with over one game. Well, it's just asinine. I mean, people, what I've learned doing this is, you know, we love our followers first and foremost. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. The problem is with people, when you take a sample, I mean, they're only taking the sample that fits their agenda. I mean, we're not talking about the other 10 games. I mean, to take it one step further, we're talking about a team that dismantled West Carroll, who was trailing a two-way favorite by three in the fourth quarter. Today. Today. You want to play scores? I mean, we're talking about two-way championships playing at the 1-8 level, which we agree on is very likely anyway. Oh. Definitely. So, forget about the Lena Winslow and the EPC game. That was a, three months ago. And we've been talking about this ever since. Forrest, to me, and I'll say it again, Forrest, and I've ranked them number one all year, and I'm not going to stop now because I believe they are the best team. Take what sample you want, shove it, because it doesn't matter. Well, and that's just one of those things, too, where, you know, you sit there and you look at Forest and you look at what they've done over the past now four seasons, and it's impressive. Obviously, thirteen and one state title. Two thousand fifteen, they upset a Dakota team in the first round. I think they went seven and two in the regular season. There. They went seven, seven and two. Were seven and twos. Yep. And then last, last year, obviously, yep. and fourteen and zero. Right. So. They've had three lo- four losses in the last three years. Yeah. I mean, sitting here saying that they're not this and that is, like you said, it's BS. Well, I, yeah. They can compete with a lot of teams, 1A and 2A, at a high level. State championship caliber level. And to break it down just a little further, I mean... Anytime you're talk, you have people debating on our social media. Anytime two people are arguing about how a team performed in a thirty to six victory in the second half, we're to the point of breaking down that aspect of them. You're doing fine. Well, exactly. I mean, okay, so you're looking for something to pick at. Forced and, to and add four you, drives and in the come, second and half. You come down to that. I mean, you are literally looking for fickle stuff. Yeah, what are you looking for? A 50-6 to six blowout win over a team that, I mean, let's be honest, Fulton's not a bad team by any stretch of the imagination. They are a very talented team. They are the same team that lost to Rockridge, who would have been a heavy favorite for the semifinal rematch with Newman had they not gotten hurt coming into the playoffs. Right. They lost to him by a point. Right. We've made this argument how many times in the past two years? Last year, I remember making this argument many times. Forreston would have matched up with Sterling Newman. They would have matched up with Rock Ridge. They would have matched up with Orion. DMAC. DMAC. Fulton. They just proved that today. Right. So if you don't believe it because it just happened, you might want to start believing. Right. And as far as the whole second half shenanigan stuff about... They had four drives in the second half. Two of them ended inside the five-yard line. Right. Yeah, so they threw an interception on third and five. whoop de doo You're up 30 to six. You're up three scores. What more do you want? Right. So, I mean, you're picking at little things. And bottom line is it comes down to this. Princeville's had a nice couple games. I'll give them that. But at some point, it ends. Unless you win state. There's one team in each class that ends their season with a win to make the playoffs. I'm not talking about the 2-7 and seven teams who got a mortal victory at the end of the year. Um, 31 teams lose. That's this weekend for Princeville. Um, and as far as Princeville is considered or concerned, I mean... The hardest part is that you have to drive up here for this shellacking. 
it's one thing to take it at home and, you know, five minutes you leave the school and blah, blah, blah. Now you get to ride a bus, you know, a couple hours south after you're getting your head saved to you. Like the other, like the other quarterfinal match, running clock again. For the love of God, let's go to the semi. <laughs> I agree with you. Forreston is the priest game favorite by four to five scores in this one. And it's largely favorited towards Forreston putting on a running clock. Now, we all know that Coach Dedick has the honor of getting up big, yeah. but then immediately pulling the brakes once he gets That's up fine. big. A win's a win. Exactly. And that's how he sees it. Why get your kids injured? But this is that game, like you said, running clock potential. And if it doesn't happen, it's going to be darn close. Right. And if it doesn't happen, it's because Forreston decided not to let it happen. Right. So, Forrest and big in this game, I agree with you. Let's get to the semifinals. Right. And to be honest, I mean, I, I really didn't want to say this, but I was really kind of hoping we could almost have done a, you know, a two-week Semi-final preview and just forget about these quarter matchups because there is no quarterfinal matchups. They're two blowouts. Book it. Okay, Shane, let's take a look at 1A South. So obviously we have Tuscola, Carrollton, Red Hill, and Athens all advancing to the 1A South quarterfinals. Carrollton got a... 20-18 to 18 win over Camp Point Central a day, which avenged a 34-28 to 28 loss just two weeks ago in Week 9 against Camp Point Central. Tuscola took care of the other WIBC opponent, as we discussed earlier today, as they beat Brown County 50-13. to 13. And that was a game where Tuscola was up 29-7 to 7 at the half. So these two are going to square off. It's going to be Carrollton at Tuscola. Who's your pick to win? Tuscola, big. Unfortunately, I just don't think Carrollton has what it takes. Um, you know, I was high on them in my rankings, and like I said earlier in the video, they just kept dropping because they're placed. I mean, they went 10 1, but they're not going to compete. And I like Tuscola in this matchup as well. Actually, looking at what their favorite. Pre-game in both polls, there are three score favorites in this matchup across the board. So, Tuscola moving on to the semifinals as expected. Right. Number two ranked Warriors getting there. Now we got Red Hill and Athens. Red Hill obviously beat uh, Cumberland 36 to nothing Friday night. Athens beat Argento Oriana today 42 to 12 and this game started off great as they were up 7 to 6 heading into the second quarter but obviously Athens pulled away big time. Yeah, I mean Athens is no joke, you know. We're talking about the four teams who we see as players in the whole state. Athens happens to be one. They're in the south with Tuscola. Um Athens in this game for me over Red Hill. Red Hill's resume might say a little no, but it's not very good. Right, and I agree with you there. I do also like Athens, but this is going to be a much tighter contested oh, yeah, game. I mean, sure. I only see Athens as a favorite by two scores over Red Hill at this moment, and that's coming across both polls as well. So, again, we very well could see a Warriors versus Warriors semifinal match, which right, would and, be pretty uh, cool and a great game as well. And that game's probably at Athens then, right? Hasn't Tuscola had two home games? This will be three home games for Tuscola, right? Two home games for Tuscola. They went on the road last week, right? Yes, they, they went yeah. on the road this so, past week because they were at Brown County. Athens was at home already. Twice. Once. Yes. So No, uh, twice. Argento should have been on the road. No, yes, you're right. So that game would be at Athens. In yes. The semis. That's correct. Which could be huge. And it could be because Athens is a tough place to play. So, that's what we have going forward for our semifinals. Exactly what we predicted. Tuscola and Athens getting to the semifinals like here. The final four picking your NCAA bracket. Exactly. And that gets more exciting as the weeks keep coming along, and we're definitely getting there. So, In 2A, obviously, our West Carroll Thunder lost 24-6, as we mentioned previously. Great season by West Carroll. Very much so. Played a great game day, like you said. Well, it was nine than to what it was. Yes. 
I mean, they, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you know, West Carroll had Gibson City down, or, you know, at a fourth of a le- fourth and eleven deep, and then you know they convert to ultimately push the game to two scores, and then it kind of just got away from them. But nonetheless, I mean, Gibson City, Melbourne, Sibley is supposed to be in the you know the semis with Sterling Newman, so. Hats off to West Carroll. Yeah. Because the winner of that game would have beat El Paso, in my opinion. So you'd have had it right in the semis where you wanted. Exactly. And, man, that would have been that something been if great. they could have pulled that off. Unfortunately, they do not. But hats off to Coach Lights and his staff. Yeah, exactly. Great season by those guys down there. And, uh, unfortunately, they they lose a lot of players. So it's been a blast watching their team over the past couple of years as we've watched them grow. Yeah. As we stated, it was this same team that lost to the state champs here two seasons ago, 22 to nothing. Tough out as in the sophomores. Yes. Tough out in the playoffs for sure. So, hats off to West Carroll. Very proud of you guys. You guys did a great job turning around the season. So, good job there. Other games going on, obviously. Um, Newman took a win today. As they beat Chicago Hope forty-one to twenty-two, Orion beat Clifton Central by a field goal in the waning seconds of the game to win that game twenty-four to twenty-one. So Shane, this sets up a rematch: Newman and Orion. The last time they squared off, Newman won this game thirty-five to twenty-one in week three. That was a game where they're actually up thirty-five to seven. Orion got two scores late in the game. So it could have been one of those games where either Orion really scored those two or Newman just pulled the brakes a little bit earlier than they probably should have. Right. Um, but who do you take in this one? Well, in my bracket, I picked Newman, and I'll take Newman as well here now. But this might be one of those games where you know Newman should be favored that 35-7, 35-14, 21, whatever it may be. But it wouldn't surprise me at the least if they played a little closer. I mean, Beaten, I don't know the circumstances of that Hope victory, but only beating Hope by 19 is a little concerning for me in that regard. Well, part of that goes back to what we've been arguing for well over the past two months. They're just that not as good as what people are making them out to be. Exactly. I mean, they beat, they beat probably the other best team in the North and in, in Aurora Christian, so they should go to the state championship game, but... It might not be in typical Newman convinced fashion that we've seen from past years. I agree. But Newman is favored in this game. One poll has him as a score favorite, and the other one has him as a two score favorite. So right so, in there. Yeah. I'd say that's accurate. And that's probably what we're going to see about a two score right. game here. Um, but like you, I like Newman as well. Our next matchup, obviously, is GCMS, who beat West Carroll today. And then El Paso Gridley with their win. Um, they beat uh, Knoxville a day, upsetting Knoxville 28-22. to 22. Um, So this sets up a conference crossover game in the heart of Illinois Conference as these two teams also met back in Week 3 where GCMS won this game 45-18. to 18. Pick it. Gibson City. Yeah. El Paso's luck's done. They beat Rockridge. They beat Knoxville. It's over. I agree. GCMS is just going to be too much, and likewise, they are still heavily favored, almost similar to the score that they beat El Paso Greeley by earlier this year, uh, as their four score favorites in both polls coming in pregame. So uh, that'll be an interesting game for GCMS to see what Mitch McNutt and company do right. as they get to the semifinals to face Newman or Orion, but Newman favored, obviously. Uh, down in the 2A South, Westville beat Carlisle 46 at 28, and then the stunner of the day was Shelbyville beating Tri Valley 50 to 35, as they kind of reversed the score on what Tri Valley was favored in that game coming in. Right, I mean it was a surprise, but Shelbyville's been in the top of our polls all season, so I mean it wasn't. I mean, yeah, it was an upset, but it wasn't really an upset. An upset. So, um. I just, I think what I don't think I'll think Westville though. Um, 
Well, I'm not really exactly sure on that, though. That, that, that's not a bad pick because, you know, Shelbyville will be coming to Westville in this right. game. And in the one poll, actually, Westville is only favored by a point. And then the other poll has Westville favored by a score. So this really is going to yeah. be that toss-up type game. Um, Westville does a lot of different things. They, they, they can run out of the bone. They can spread you out right. and throw the ball. Shelbyville is mainly a spread team, and they're going to throw the ball around. So it will be interesting to see how these two teams adapt to each other. But I, too, I like Westville in this game. Um, the other one was Moreau Forsyth. They beat El Dorado 48-6 to today. Good board. And then West Hancock took care of Bismarck Henning 28-12. to um, So this one's going to play out as Moreau Forsyth travels to West Hancock for this game in the quarterfinals. What do you got here? Moreau Forsyth, they picked him in the state championship game. Got to win the third round quarterfinals. You know, and it's funny because in the videos for the playoffs, I picked Moreau Forsyth to go to state, and then in my bracket, I had him losing to Tri Valley in the semifinals. Oh boy! So my bracket's busted. But I agree with you. I like Moreau, and now that Tri Valley's out of there, I mean, granted, Shelbyville's still gonna be one of them teams to watch, but I definitely think that Moreau is now the favorite to get back to. The state title game for the second year in a row where they would most likely face off against Newman or uh, GCMS in that game. Right. Um, but Moreau is favored in this game in both polls by about 9 to 10 points. So. Sure. Yep. so we should have some interesting games here, both 1A and 2A. Honestly, if everything breaks out the way that we see it, we should definitely see a great 1A semifinal and state championship matchup take place in the next coming or in the upcoming weeks. Right. And 2A even, based off of what we see coming out of the north and the south, going to see some uh, good games there as well. I mean, the winner of Shelbyville Westville taking on most likely Moreau Forsyth, but even if it is West Hancock, you really can't go wrong down there either. Right. And I mean, top team, you know, when you start getting to the quarterfinals and the semifinals, you're starting to eliminate kind of the trash. I mean, the teams who have slipped through the cracks on having an easy draw, so to speak. And, you know, how many times haven't we seen at night at the Sorry, and then UIC and a track team and stay at the same time. You know, you got Dakota and Morrison, and, and now this year, hopefully, we'll have an NUIC and probably Sterling and Newman. So, fun times. I mean, you don't have to get out of the area far, and you got, I mean, that just speaks for the area again. Well, and that's one of the fun things that we've seen in the past years when NUIC and track make it to the state. It's almost like time. having one community down there because they kind of cheer for each other. Right. You, you start seeing the other team at the hotels, and they're wishing you luck. You're wishing them luck. And then you get down at the game, and you watch them start filtering right. in as they're getting ready to take the seats for the game. They're seeing your game, congratulating you on the win, and you're wishing them best of luck in the next right. game going forward. Yeah, it's a great environment. And like we said, the Cal. Great place for a state championship game. I agree. Close uh, to home. Well, <laughs> you know, not just because it's close to home, right. but the smaller stadium right. atmosphere just makes right. it feel more packed and more right. um, entertaining. Right. There. And unless Princeville pulls off not one but two miracles, I mean, we're guaranteed to be covering a game in a couple weeks in DeKalb. How exciting. Two years in a row. I know. Right. High five on that stuff. So, right. so definitely see the NUIC roll into a state championship game. Force and just, just take care of your business. Right. So. Yeah, up to the games on Saturday. It'll be great. Obviously, we only got two left to do. But as always, root for the NUIC.